Welcome back to another episode of Smooth Brain EDH, where we make the smoothest plays with the biggest brains. We've got another exciting gameplay for you all today with some really sweet decks. So let's see what everyone brought to the table. Our first player today is Ethan on a Realme of the Dead Tide. This deck wants to fill its graveyard with a bunch of powerful creatures, then use its commander to make three copies of them and overwhelm opponents with value and power. He keeps a hand with an island, a swamp, talisman of dominance, strategic planning, counterspell, playcrafter, and Diluvian primordial. Next up is Sam on Yuriko, the Tiger Shadow. This ninja tribal deck aims to swing in with cheap, evasive creatures, then ninjutsu in a bunch of ninjas to trigger Yuriko and take out chunks of his opponent's life totals. His starting hand has three stone-covered islands, River of Tears, Fourth Bridge Prowler, Thieves Guild Enforcer, and an Ocean Thief. Third player of this game is Cody on Adeline, Resplendent Cathar. This mono white deck plans to flood the board with creatures and swing in for tons of damage with its commander. Cody keeps a hand of two planes, Bonders Enclave, Mother of Runes, Avon Mind Sensor, Welcoming Vampire, and Anointed Procession. Last up this game is Caden on Kaikar, Wind's Fury. This is a polymorph deck, hoping to turn the spirit generated from Kaikar into powerful game ending threats. His hand has a snow-covered island, deserted beach, steam vents, training center, preordain, Rhea Dawnbringer, and Sarah's Emissary. We're about to hop right into it, but before that, go ahead and leave us a comment on who you hope will take them to victory this game. While you're down there, go ahead and give us a like and subscribe. We have videos with the new commanders from Kamigawa and Neon Dynasty coming out next week, so make sure to subscribe to see that as soon as it comes out. Links to the decklist and our social media will be in the description. Now, on to the gameplay. Looks like Sam wins the die roll. He plays a Snow Swamp and passes. Cody will play a Plains into a turn one Mother of Runes and then pass the turn to Caden. Who plays a Snow Island and a Preordain? Scrying two to the bottom and then drawing a card. The turn is then passed to Ethan who plays an Island and then passes to Sam who stops him on his end step and flashes in his Thieves Guild Enforcer, making everyone mill two cards. Now in his turn, Sam plays a Snow Island and then moves to combat. He ultimately decides to swing his Thieves Guild Enforcer at Cody. Cody won't block, so Sam Commander Ninjutsu's in Yuriko. Sam reveals a Slither Blade at the top of his library, so all of his opponents will lose one life. The turn is then passed to Cody, who plays another Plains and then just passes the turn. Caden will play a Steam Vents Tapped and also pass the turn. On Ethan's turn, he plays Swamp, taps for two, and casts Talisman of Dominance and then passes the turn to Sam. Sam will play his River of Tears, and then tap it to cast his Enforcer again. His opponents will mill two cards again, and then he'll cast his Fourth Bridge Prowler. When it enters, the only real thing it can target is Cody's mom, so Cody will activate it, giving it protection from black. Sam will then cast the Slither Blade, and then move to combat, swinging Yuriko at Cody again. Yuriko reveals Portent, and all his opponents lose a life. The turn is then passed to Cody, who plays another Plains, and then taps for three, casting his Welcoming Vampire, hoping to get some card draw on future turns. The turn is then Cadence, who plays his Deserted Beach into Proteus Staff, and then passes to Ethan. Ethan will cast his commander, or Rami of the Dead Tide, and then plays an Evolving Wilds, sacrificing it for a tap Swamp to the battlefield, and he passes the turn to Sam while he's searching. Sam will start off with another Snow Island. He'll then move to combat and swing one unblockable at Cody, and the rest at Caden. Cody takes one, Caden takes three, and everyone loses one life when Sam reveals a Ponder. And after this, he'll pass the turn to Cody. Cody plays a Bonder's Enclave as land for turn, and then taps for one to cast land tax. The turn is then passed to Caden. Caden sees that he has no creatures on the board, and all his opponents do. So, he plays a Snow-Covered Plains, and drops a Wrath of God. Sam will respond, and casts Winds of Rebuke, bouncing his Thieves Guild Enforcer back to his hand, and milling everyone for two. The Wog will then resolve, and Yuriko and Arami will go back to the Command Zone. Caden then passes the turn to Ethan. Ethan will play an Island, and then recast Arami for five mana. He then passes to Sam, who flashes in Thieves Guild Enforcer again on his end step, milling his opponents for two again. Now on his turn, Sam will play another Snow Swamp, and then will cast Ponder. He ultimately decides to shuffle his deck and then draw a card. He'll then move to combat and swing his Thieves Guild Enforcer at Cody again. Of course, there's no blocks, so he activates his Commander Ninjutsu, swapping in Yuriko. Moving to damage, Cody takes one, and Sam will reveal a Conchworn. Each of his opponents will lose two life. He then passes the turn to Cody, who decides to flash in Avon Mind Sensor at the end of his turn. Now on his upkeep, Land Tax will trigger, and Cody will find three planes to his hand. He'll play one of those planes, and still trying to find some sort of card draw in Mono White, will tap for four and cast Mangara the Diplomat. The turn will then be passed to Caden, who plays his Training Center, and then taps for four to cast Kaikar. 
The turn is then passed to Ethan, who immediately drops his Plague Crafter. Sam will spawn by flashing in Thieves Guild Enforcer, milling everyone for two. Ethan will sacrifice the Plague Crafter to itself, Sam will sacrifice his Enforcer, Caden Kaikar, and Cody sacrifices his Mind Sensor. Ethan will then activate around me to give his Plague Crafter Encore by exiling three lands from his graveyard. And you better believe he immediately activates its Encore ability, making three token copies of it. Ethan sacrifices them to themselves, Sam sacrifices Yuriko and has to discard two cards, Cody sacrifices Mangara and discards two planes, and Caden has to discard three cards. After a pretty good turn, Ethan will pass to Sam. Sam will just play a Moth Dust Changeling on his turn, and then pass the turn to Cody. Cody doesn't trigger land tax on his upkeep, so he casts Adeline and then passes the turn to Caden. Caden starts his turn off with a snow-covered mountain. He'll then tap for four and casts Indomitable Creativity, X is equal to one, blowing up his Proteus staff. He flips into a clever impersonator and decides to copy Ethan's around me, seeing as how he has a lot of big butts in his graveyard now. <laughs> Poor Ethan. Thankfully Caden just didn't see it, so there is a redemption arc. And so after this, Caden will pass the turn to Ethan. Now on his turn, Ethan ominously asks to see everybody's graveyards. He'll then play an Ash Barons as land for turn, then tap for two to cast Strategic Planning. He puts a card to his hand, and then two lands to his graveyard. He'll then activate a Rami to exile three lands, and give Crow of Dark Tidings Encore till end of turn. He'll pay the three mana to make three token copies of it. When they enter the battlefield, for each of them, he mills two cards, six in total. Unfortunately, even with the help of all of Sam's milling, he hasn't found any of his big bad creatures. He moves to combat, and then swings a crow token at everyone, and nobody can block. Ethan will then move to his end step, and sacrifice all three crows. He mills six more cards when they die. Notable creatures include Solemn Simulacrum, Noxious Gear Hulk, and Moldrifter. The turn is now passed to Sam. Sam will start off with a Conchorn. He'll then move to combat, and swing his Changeling at Ethan, who can't block it, so of course, Sam pays two, and Ninjutsu's in Yuriko. Sam will then respond to her damage trigger and sacrifices Conchhorn to draw two cards and put one back on the top of his library. After Conchhorn resolves, Ethan decides to respond to Yuriko by casting Thought Scour, making Sam mill two cards. Those two cards are Clever Impersonator and Spy Network. Sam then reveals a Dispel, puts it to his hand, and his opponents each lose one life. After this, he'll play a Snow Island and cast Soul Ring before passing to Cody. Cody will stop it on his end step and flash into Kathar Commando. On upkeep, land tax will trigger and he'll Ancestral Recall for three planes. He then plays one of these planes and then immediately taps for six, casting Elspeth's Sun's Champion. He'll uptick her to make three 1-1s one and then move to combat. He'll declare Kathar Commando at Sam and then Adeline at Ethan. Adeline will trigger and Cody will make three 1-1s one going at each of his opponents. Ethan will take nine total damage, eight of which is Commander. Sam will take four and Caden will block one of the 1-1s. One the turn is then passed to Caden, who plays a Hingegate Pathway as land for turn. He'll then tap for four and cast Transmogrify on his Clever Impersonator. He flips a lot of creatures after it resolves, but the one he finally lands on is Jingitaxis. And Caden, who is empty-handed, gladly moves to his end step to refill his hand. The turn is then passed to Ethan. And Ethan starts off by tapping for five and casting Incarnation Technique, choosing to demonstrate it and choosing Sam for the target. Caden responds by cycling Irrigated Farmland. Ethan moves to resolve his first copy, even though Sam's technically resolves first. He mills Peregrine Drake, Cyclonic Rift, Worm Coil Engine, Mind Stone, and a Soul Ring. He puts Peregrine Drake to the battlefield, taps a mana, and then untaps five lands. Sam then mills five cards, nothing really notable, and brings back his clever impersonator. He copies the most obvious target, which is Jenga Texas. And then Ethan will resolve his last copy. He mills lands in a Sir Conrad, and then brings back Worm Coil Engine. Ethan will then give Noxious Gear Hulk Encore by activating around me and exiling three lands. He then Encores out three Noxious Gear Hulks, destroying two Jinkitaxises and Adeline. He'll also gain 12 life from this. After this, he'll move to combat and swing one Noxious Gear Hulk token at each of his opponents. Sam and Caden take the five damage, and Cody uses two of his tokens to chump one. After this, Ethan will move to his end step and sacrifice all three tokens. The turn is now Sam's, and Sam will cast a Changeling Outcast, a Moth Dust Changeling, and Soothsaying. He'll then move to combat and swing Yuriko at Caden. When she connects, he reveals a land off the top so nobody loses any life. After this, the turn is passed to Cody, and land tax will trigger on his upkeep so he gets three planes to his hand. He'll play one of the planes as land for turn, and then tap for two and cast Lightning Greaves. He then taps for five, casts Adeline, and then moves the Greaves over to Adeline. He'll then uptick Elspeth, making three more 1-1s, one -ones, and then move to combat. He swings Kathar Commando at Caden, and that's it. He'll make three 1-1s, one -ones, taps and attacking each opponent. Caden and Sam don't block, and Ethan blocks with his Worm Coil, gaining 6 life. Caden will take 4 damage, and Sam will take 1. Cody will then pass the turn. And Caden will start his turn off with the Command Tower. 
Unfortunately, Jenga Tanks has only got Caden more lands and ramp, so he casts a frantic search to draw two, discard two, and untap three lands. Unfortunately for Caden, Sam flashes in his Notion Thief. Caden tries to save himself by rapid hybriding the Notion Thief, but unfortunately, Sam still has that dispel. So Sam will draw two cards, Caden will discard two, and untap three lands. Caden shows how flooded he is by discarding two lands. Caden will then cast Kaikar, and then pass the turn to Ethan. Ethan will immediately go to combat, and swing Worm Coil and Peregrine Drake at Elspeth. Cody chumps with one of his 1-1s, one Ethan will gain 6, and Elspeth will take 2. Post-combat, he'll tap for 3 and cast a Barrier Life. He gets Agent of Treachery, Consecrated Sphinx, and Sepulchral Primordial to his graveyard. And then after checking everyone's graveyards, Ethan hardcasts Dread Return, returning Sepulchral Primordial to the battlefield. He grabs Cody's Mangara, Caden's Ray of Dawnbringer, and Sam's Clever Impersonator, copying his Primordial, repeating the process. He gets Sam's 4th Bridge Prowler, Cody's Draineth Magistrate, and Caden's Nezahal, and Ethan directs the Prowler's ETB trigger at the Notion Thief. But not done yet, Ethan sacrifices Clever Impersonator, Fourth Bridge Prowler, and Peregrine Drake to flashback Dredge Return and get his Consecrated Sphinx. After this extremely eventful turn, Ethan passes the turn to Sam. And when Sam draws for turn, Ethan will draw two. Then Sam plays a Snow Island. He then casts a Baleful Strix to draw a card, and Ethan will draw two. He'll then cast a Wing Crafter, and that's his second spell this turn, so Ethan will draw a card. He'll Soul Bond it with Yuriko, so now she has Flying. Sam will then move to combat, and swing Yuriko and his Moth Dust Changeling at Cody, and then the Outcast at Ethan. He'll then give Moth Dust Changeling Flying by tapping his Wing Crafter, and Cody will take 2 damage, and Ethan will take 1. Sam then responds to his Yuriko trigger by paying 5 mana into Soothsaying to rearrange the top 5 cards of his library. Unfortunately, it's nothing special, and he reveals Spell Pierce, so all his opponents lose a life. And then with his other two triggers, he reveals Tainted Isle and a Snow-Covered Swamp. Sam will then just pass the turn after combat. Cody will trigger land tax on his upkeep, but fails to find, and Ethan will draw two on his draw step. Cody then casts Anointed Procession, and Ethan misses a Nezahal trigger. Cody then moves to combat and swings Adeline at Caden. When she attacks, he'll make six tokens tapped and attacking. And unfortunately for Ethan, Mangara doesn't trigger when creatures enter tapped and attacking. Moving to blockers, Caden decides to just block one of the 1-1s one and go to a dangerous life total. Ethan will block with Nezahal and Mangara, and gain two off Mangara's lifelink. Post-combat, Cody will downtick Elspeth to destroy all creatures with power 4 or greater. The ability resolves, and Ethan will get two 3-3s, three one with death touch and one with lifelink. After this attempt to clean up the board, the turn is passed to Caden. Caden will start off with an exotic orchard, and then cast Sahili Sublime Artificer. He'll get a 1-1 from it. He'll then cast an Izzet Signet, getting another spirit, and a servo. He'll then pass the turn to Ethan. Ethan will start his turn off by activating Arami, targeting Peregrine Drake, and exiling three cards from his graveyard. He then plays an Underground River as land for turn, and then encores his Peregrine Drake. He untaps five lands with the first ETB, and then floats five mana. Three blue, and two black. He then repeats this process two more times, so he has six blue, four black, and all of his lands untapped. He'll use five of that mana and tap for two more to cast Diluvium Primordial. He exiles Vanquish the Horde from Cody's graveyard, wins a Rebuke from Sam, and Ponder from Cadence. He resolves Ponder first, ultimately deciding to shuffle the deck and then draw a card. He then casts Winds of Rebuke, bouncing around me to his hand, and everyone mills two more cards. I would like to point out that one of the two cards Ethan mills is Grey Merchant of Asphodel. And finally, he casts Vanquish the Horde. When Cody gets priority, he pays one to sacrifice his Cathar Commando to blow up Ethan's Talisman. After this, Ethan will cast Swiftfoot Boots, then casts Arami and pays one to equip her with the boots. Ethan will then activate her, exiling three lands to target Grey Merchant of Asphodel. Ethan will then, of course, encore Grey Merchant, getting three copies of Grey Merchant, and each copy will drain everyone for seven. Unfortunately, this does knock Caden out of the game. Ethan will then move to combat and swing a Grey Merchant at each of his opponents. Since Caden's not there, he decides to swing the third one at Elspeth. Ethan will then pass the turn to Sam. Sam, unfortunately, only hard casts Yuriko and prays Cody can find some way to get them out of this situation. Cody can unfortunately only cast Adeline, a selfless spirit, and then equip Adeline with the boots, swinging at Ethan. Ethan will take 6 from Adeline, 2 from the tokens, and Sam will take 1, blocking one of the tokens. With nothing left to do, the turn is passed to Ethan. Ethan goes ahead and activates his commander, exiling 3 cards, targeting Sepulchral Primordial. This is enough for the table to decide to concede, but Ethan wants to go and grab everything he would have gotten anyway. Without a doubt, Ethan is this week's winner. His budget deck really put in some work. Well, there you have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, if you did, please leave a like and comment down below. We love hearing from you. Hope you guys are looking forward to Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, because next week we're going to have some gameplay for you. Are there any commanders you're specifically looking forward to? 
there's some really cool ones, so let us know. Once again, thank you so much for watching, everyone, and as always, have a smooth day.